What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am bringing you all of the fall inspiration with this green smoky fox eye shaped makeup look. I'm obsessed with this. I feel like this is just August in a makeup look. Whenever I think of August, I think of the color of my shirt. I don't know why, but today I used the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette, which I recently picked up and I haven't used yet until today. And I am just loving this look. And you can wear this look any time of the year. You can wear this look and just have summer on the mind if you are still very much in summer mode. Um, technically, we all have to be because it is summer still. But if you want to bring the fall mood and vibe in, I feel like you can do that with this look. I don't know. I am at least. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to walk you through all of my tips and tricks and break it down step by step because for me, this is a little bit more complicated. Anything with this shape is a little bit more complicated for me. So I have to take my time. This took me much longer than a normal smoky eye tutorial because I have to like be very intentional with my placement and very intentional with my steps because otherwise before you know it, I got like a blown out smoky rounded look going on. So I hope you enjoy this look. Please subscribe. Let's get started. Let's begin. I want to start with the Morphe Prep and Set Mist because I've never used this as a primer. So let's try this. This will be interesting. I've never tried a spray to prep my face before, so this is definitely a first. For foundation today, I really wanna use the Rare Beauty Foundation because I haven't used this in so long. The shade that I have is 210N. Um, I do remember when I used this in the past, I really, really liked it. So we're gonna try this today. Where's my brush? Use my Fox 4 brush for my brush set to blend this in grab my mirror yeah I forgot the consistency of this foundation is pretty unique it kind of goes on like a mousse sort of feel uh, very lightweight also feels like not thick in a bad way like it's heavy but like a thicker moussey but thin if you have it you know what I mean but like it blends really really easily which is really nice I'm like really red today and my skin. I don't know why. Oh, I was just doing dishes and it was really hot. That's probably why. Lightly over the nose, not too much. Foundation's done. That is really, really beautiful. It's a great like everyday foundation. I kind of just forgot about it. It was in my drawer in my collection and I'm gonna be going through my collection very soon and just kind of like cleaning it out and decluttering. Since the last time I decluttered my collection, it's pretty much maintained. There's only a few more things that I've added in, but I've noticed there's a lot of things that I still don't use. So I wanna get rid of some more stuff. So I'll be doing that soon, but I went in there recently to take a look because I usually just keep my favorite foundations out here and uh, this guy was hiding in there, so. I had to use that again because I, I used to really like it. It's been a hot minute. Um, I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear condi uh, Conditioner. <laughs> Full Wear Concealer. Um, this also is something that I used to use all the time and I haven't used it in a long time. This reminds me of the Tarte Shape Tape but it also reminds me of the Catrice True Skin Concealer but maybe more matte. This I think is more like Shape Tape than this one. I haven't used this in a long time either so we will Give this a try. Ooh, it is a little light. That's okay. Maybe we'll go a little dramatic today with the concealer. Do you remember doing like bright under eyes? Like really bright? Not trending to do that anymore, but like maybe I'll do that today because that might be really fun. I'm just going to use my brush to blend this in. It's not as bright as I thought. It's just a lot lighter than I normally go. I'm also going to bring a little bit right here, mainly for brightening purposes. Um, I did this in my latte makeup tutorial. I don't know if it did anything, but in my head it did something. So I'm doing that today. I just feel like it added a little bit of brightness here. Probably so unnecessary, but that's okay. No, I'm loving that whole base to everything. I want to go into some cream contour. I think that I'm going to use this Anastasia Golden Tan Cream Bronzer. I haven't used this in like a year. I just get so set in my ways and I use the same things all the time. And I remember I really liked this, but it's been a really long time since I've used it. So looks like this on the inside. And I'm going to use the Smith 157 brush to pick it up. 
and start stippling it on the skin. This is very nice. It is more golden, which you know me, I like more red undertones, but it is still very beautiful. And I like trying things out and using things that like I normally wouldn't gravitate towards sometimes because it's nice to step out of the box and sometimes you don't know what you like until you try something different. And then I'm gonna bring this on the jawline. I think all of that looks really nice on my skin. I feel like all of the products I just used are working together really nicely and like blended together so nicely. It looks like just like velvet. I love it. And then I wanna use the Coral Peach Cream Cheek Color from Honest Beauty. This is their cream blush. This is in like this peachy color. They have some of the most beautiful cream blushes. I have, I think one other color and it's like a darker, more like berry shade. It's beautiful. There it is. I could not find my brush. This is the Hollywood Complexion Brush from Charlotte Tilbury and I love it for applying cream blush. Um, just because it's so small and you can be very strategic with your placement. Um, but yeah, I really want to do more like peachy cheeks today because I'm going to be doing more green on the eyes. And I think peach and green really complement each other really well. Bright as fuck. I'm going to powder my face with the translucent powder from Laura Mercier. And then I, I wanna use a lot of different products today that I haven't used in a while. Um, one of them being the contour kit from Anastasia. Love this, this is an oldie but a goodie. This is what the packaging looks like. I'm sure you're familiar with it because it's been around for forever. And then the inside. And I'm gonna, why does that not wanna focus? There we go. I'm gonna mix together this color and this color for under the eyes just to set those. I used to always go in with a separate powder like this for the under eyes to set that and I haven't done that in a really long time. I usually just go in with the Laura Mercier powder and I'm we're gonna try this out and see how it goes um, because it's been so long. And then I wanna use the Hourglass bronzers. I saw Raw Beauty Christie talking about Hourglass in one of her recent videos. I like forgot about these hourglass bronzers. So I have diffused light and radiant light or diffused bronze light, radiant bronze light. This is the, this is the diffused. And then the radiant bronze light looks like this. I'm gonna start with the diffused first because that one's a little bit more cool toned. This one's a lot more bronzy and goes, I think a little bit more shimmery, which can be scary for me because I do get more oily. So I like to keep it like on the down low. Um, I'm gonna take this brush, which I really love for the Hourglass bronzers. It's this double ended brush from Hourglass. And I actually like the smaller side because I it's like, it's still pretty fluffy. It's not the same as like my Fox 5 brush from Sigma. Like that is the size of that and this is the size of this. So it's still a lot bigger and fluffier. So I'm gonna go in with this side and pick this up. And start focusing it on the face. And it still goes on very diffused like a bronzer brush would or like this side would, but it doesn't go in like a huge large area. Oh, this is such a beautiful shade. I like forgot about it. It's so sheer, so you can kind of have a heavier hand with it. And it's not gonna like, I don't know. I can tend to go overboard with bronzer. So it's not gonna do that because it is so sheer. It has such a beautiful finish. It's like shimmery, but not too much. Let's try the Radiant Bronze Light. See what happens with this guy. Ooh, that one's definitely more intense. A lot warmer. Ooh, that one's pretty. I'm gonna have to use this a lot more. I can't remember the last time I used the Hourglass bronzers. It's been some time. All right, so now that we're bronzed, I'm gonna go back into the Anastasia Contour Kit. This feels so old school, using like so many different products and like bouncing around from different palettes and colors and stuff. It's a lot of fun though. I think I'm just gonna mix all three of these together because I think, well, let's try just this one. It looks a little warm though and a little dark. We'll, we'll play. Boop, boop, boop. I've been mainly focusing my jawline contour over here and then just lightly feathering here because I find um, with my double chin, <laughs> if I contour where my jawline should be, I feel like it accentuates it a little bit more, but I didn't do that the last time I did my makeup and I felt like there was something in my ear. Um, and I just felt like it looked better. The cheekbones. 
Mm, loving these colors together. It's intense and I like it. Mm, mm, mm. Softly going over with my bronzer brush to soften all the edges. I'm gonna use only the center shade to do my nose contour because I like when the nose contour has more of like a cool toned shade to it. I just think it looks more natural. And this brush I believe is discontinued. It's a Luxie 182 brush. I mean, they make eyeshadow brushes like this that are like fluffy but angled. That's like the old school classic eyeshadow brush that like everyone had when they first started out. And that I find is like the perfect shape for a nose contour brush. For my highlighter today, I'm gonna use the MAC O oh Darling highlighter, another classic. It gives this like gorgeous golden hue. I'm gonna go in. Pop this on the cheekbones and then also do the nose and Cupid's bow with my finger and then dust that out with a brush. I really wanna to top my blush just to kind of lock it in place. I feel like anytime I do a cream blush, I just always wanna go over it with a powder blush. You don't have to, but I want to. Um, I wanna use this new palette from Laura Lee and Lunar Beauty. It's the Full Fantasy blush palette. This on the inside, lots of beautiful colors, and then it looks like two highlighters as well. Um, and I'm gonna go in with Peachy Keen, which is the center peachy shade. Just pick that up on my brush, slightly tap it on top of the cheeks. Beautiful. And you can see the difference now. It's just a little bit more intense on this side. And it kind of just like helps my blush last longer because blush is like the first one to go. I'm going to use the Morphe Prep and Set Mist. Okay, so I just went in with the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. It looks absolutely crazy i do that first and then i'll go in with a spoolie and diffuse it out and it will help just give a little bit of an extra base and guideline for filling them in and then i don't have to use my pencil as much okay per usual i'm not loving the brows but i feel like once the rest of the makeup is on it looks better um, i'm just gonna top them off with the glossier boy brow brow gel just to hopefully make them look a little bit more fluffy i'm gonna prime using the painterly paint pot from mac Ooh. Push it in on the skin all over the lids. Time for eyeshadow. I'm so excited. I'm gonna be using the Natasha Denona Yucca palette, which by the way, I used to think that this was called Yucca. Apparently it's Yucca. Um, I love the feeling of this. I feel like it has not necessarily a NARS packaging feel, but almost it's very delicious in the hands. And I love the packaging, but even better is the inside. Look at how stunning this is. I love especially this shade here. I feel like it's so unique for this palette and I just can't wait to play today. I really wanna do like a elongated fox eye cat eye look and do more greens and then something with some shimmer as well. So I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna start very lightly with Valley. I'm gonna bring it here in the outer lid. Very lightly because this is a little um, too dark for me for a transition shade, but I just am going in with a very light hand and I barely applied any on the brush. And then lightly bring it into the crease once the majority of the product is off the brush, just to give me a base and connect it into the nose contour. I'm still working with that initial dip into the eyeshadow. I didn't go in for more, just so I could use all of that up to get my base. And that's a way if you have more fair skin and something is just like way too dark for your skin tone and like it looks so intense, go in with such a light hand, focus it mainly on the outer part. And then once a lot of the product is off, then you can kind of like gradually move that product in and it can distribute more of the color that you need for your skin tone. I feel like we just kind of created a color that isn't in the palette by just using a teeny tiny amount and then like utilizing it all over. I'm now gonna go into a very tiny little eyeliner brush. It's like this little itty bitty square. I'll try to find a dupe for this because they no longer make this brush, but I'll try to find something similar online. Just any kind of like, you can even just do like an angled brush. I just because I have this, I use this. I think I'm gonna go into this shade. I wasn't expecting to go into this one first, but I think that 
that will be a good base for the liner, even though it's shimmery. So I'm going on the outer corner, following the line of the lower lash line, not the upper lash line, because if you follow that and go to the corner where that ends, even though it's like the tiniest little bit of space, that space is gonna make it way too high for your eye. So follow along the lower and almost go a little straighter than you normally would. Do you see that space between here and here? That's the difference that I'm talking about. So you don't wanna go all the way to the end, you wanna go about halfway and start dragging it in and creating a wing. You don't wanna go all the way to the end because you wanna be able to customize the shape. And if you start all the way at the end at this point, you're gonna have way too dramatic of an eyeliner, especially if that's not what you wanted. It's gonna be really hard to control and create the exact shape that you're wanting. And now from there, I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit and start flicking this out so that it like disappears into nothing. I'm gonna go into the Makeup Forever Pencil in Forest. And I'm first gonna start by just like lining this in the area, in this vicinity, and then go in with my brush and start blending that out to create more of this liner shape. You can even pick it up on the liner itself like this if that's easier for you, and it probably will be because this is a lot more defined than the eyeliner itself. And just go over that wing. We will come back to that because I do wanna do a little bit of stuff in the inner part, but I want to work on blending this out first. So I'm gonna take this shade here, pick that up on this brush, and I'm gonna use that to blend out the edges of this liner. I'm going right over it. I'm gonna pick up Citrine, which is the shade here, and go very, very lightly over that. Maybe come and bring this upside down just to help blend that out. Just kind of like, don't be afraid to mess anything up because you can always clean up the bottom. You really want to make sure that this is blended up top. And if you take away anything, you can always go back in and build the liner back up. You just wanna keep doing this diagonal motion, not circles, not bringing it in the crease, just diagonal straight from here to here. I'm gonna go into flax and just deepen up this wing just a touch, just a touch. I do that by just staying along the lower border, not the upper back into that liner and pick it up on the brush. And I'm gonna do the inner corner wing. So first, I know this is gross, make sure that you don't have anything in your eyes. I don't know why, but like gunk in the eyes grosses me out more than anything. <laughs> and then when you go to do this, go much shorter than you think that you would need at all. That's the first tip. The second tip is don't curve it down. I feel like in our minds, it makes sense to think that this is going in this like diagonal sort of shape. So you would think that this is going up, this should go down. Don't do that, have it go straight in, just, just straight, and it will help you create that exact shape. So I'm gonna start here. It's gonna be hard to talk, so I'm just gonna do it and show you. I'm gonna go into the Anastasia Contour Kit and I'm gonna grab this lightest shade just to add, let's see if this does anything because I don't have anything light enough. I need a little bit of depth up here. Yeah, that was actually perfect. I just, I'm, you probably can't even see it. It's for me. <laughs> just to give me a little bit of depth here without going too dark because the other shade that's in this palette for this is a little too dark for me. So I'm just using my contour. Perfect. It's exactly what I needed. Um, I'm actually gonna go back into that Bally shade, the first shade that we used, which was the one that's too dark for the step that I just did. Really tap off the excess and I'm going over this outer area right there. Yes. Boop. Just to give a little boop, boop. Mm-hmm. I'm lightly going underneath 
with whatever's left over on this brush. It's very much off the brush now, just so I can get a little bit of green down there without going like too crazy, because I still want the underneath to be pretty clear. Ooh, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Okay, with my finger, I'm gonna pick up this shade. It has, it has this shift to it where it looks like pinky, but then also green. And I'm gonna put it on my finger and very, very lightly, I'm gonna pat it on the inner lid area like this. This shade next and put it right on the ball of the eye, right on the center. That's where the greenest part of the look will be. And then oh, why the fuck not? Why not? My other finger, I'm gonna go into this one because I can. And I'm scared that I'm about to ruin this, but I'm going to very lightly pat this on my hand first and then go on the outer part. That made it. Oof, oof. That just complemented the other shades, I swear. We're gonna buff out these edges, keep this still in this form because it's starting to look more round and we don't want that. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of my concealer and put this on somewhere on my hand. I've got a bunch of shimmers everywhere, but I'm gonna put this underneath the eyeliner just to brighten that up and make it extra sharp. So I'm picking it up here on my concealer brush. This is an Anastasia 18 brush. So it kind of disappears into nothing and then push the product in with your finger. Don't smear it around. Oh, this does look like a frog, doesn't it? I'm gonna curl my lashes, add some mascara, mainly in the wispy cat eye way, fox eye way, where a lot of the mascara is focused on the outer corner. And then for my false lashes, I used the Ardell 422 lashes, but I cut them up into four sections and kept the order of them like they normally are, but I just, Focus them mainly on the like outer part of the eye so that it still gave that more winged out effect rather than being more fanned out. So it is more tedious, but it aids to this whole look and makes it look more, you know what I mean? Um, and you can see like if I do this, you can see like th this whole front section is just my mascara and then it's like all of this volume going up like this. I'm gonna grab my MAC Extended Play Mascara and lightly, lightly, lightly add a little bit of definition to the bottom lashes. Nothing too crazy. I just want some definition. I don't want it to go very dramatic. And again, maybe a little bit more definition on the outer part, not so much on the inner. Finally complete the look with the lips. This took me 500 years. Um, let's do, so I, when I was picturing this look in my mind, I thought, oh, I wanna do MAC Honey Love, but I couldn't find it anywhere, even though I know that I had it around here somewhere. Hold on, I've got a lash that's poking. Um, I knew that I had it around here in the vicinity, but I couldn't find it. So I went through my collection and I found this one from L'Oreal. It's called Utmost Taupe, which is one of my favorites, but it was buried at the back of my drawer. So I swatched this on my hand, which I have some like leftover concealer left on my hand. Let me swatch this because I ended up finding Honey Love. They are so close. It's so similar. So this one's Honey Love and this one's Utmost Taupe from L'Oreal. How funny is that, that I had this exact specific shade. I swatched a, like a hundred different nude shades. Okay, I swatched five, but whatever. And I was like, no, this is perfect. And that's exactly what I was thinking ahead of time. So we're gonna use this one because how fun. Found a good dupe for Honey Love. It looks like a very similar consistency too, but Honey Love looks a little bit more moisturizing, hydrating, got a little bit more of a sheen. For my lip liner, I'm gonna go into Soft Brown from NYX. You know the drill, I'm gonna line my lips and overline them, especially on the Cupid's bow, actually mainly on the Cupid's bow. Um, I'm gonna turn it on its side so I can blend in the lip liner so it fades and then blend it in with my finger a little bit. And then we'll go in with lipstick. It's a little bit warmer than I was wanting. So I'm gonna grab Nude Beige, which is a little bit cooler toned. And now I'm gonna go into the utmost taupe from L'Oreal and tap that in on the lips. All righty. 
This is the final look. I love this, especially because it's only August and I feel like this is just the perfect way to start off this fall cozy season. To me, if August were a color, it would be the color of my shirt, this green. I don't know why, but when I think of August, that's what I think of, kind of like the prep into fall. And I feel like this look just emulates that. I know it's really not that serious, but this just gives me all of like the pre-fall vibes. It's sassy, but smoky, but wearable at the same time. I also feel like this is kind of like a trendier look for right now, like this more winged out look. I love this. That's it for this tutorial. That's it for this look. I hope that I explained it well enough. I feel like at least for me, doing more like winged out looks like this are a lot more difficult for me to achieve because I am just used to just going for it with my brush and going in circular motions and blowing it out rather than like being very strategic with the shape. I have to think about it while I'm doing it and think angles, angles instead of like more rounded. So it is really tricky for me. So I hope that I broke it down uh, well enough and detailed enough. Um, and if you end up recreating it, please send me your pictures over on Instagram um, and let me know what else you want to see from me down below in the comments. I was gonna say description, down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and I will see you very soon.